Chapter 17. The back door opened and a man strode through. Guten Tag, Harkrum. Wait, He stopped in his tracks as he saw us. He looked shocked, his mouth hanging open, speechless. A second man stopped behind him. Was son dilute? The first man demanded angrily. Warum son dann hired? I had no choice but to. Nyai, nyai, nyai. Nur in Deutsch. Ja, ja. The man came completely into the room and five other men followed him in. The first man continued to ask Mr. Crumb questions. He was angry and upset, and Mr. Crumb was stammering in response. He looked worried. I caught a few of the words, words I knew from my grandparents, but there was no way I could make any sense of anything. I wondered if Jack understood better. He knew a few more words than I did. The man, who was obviously in charge, came over and stood before us. I am told that you have important information, he said crisply. You speak English, I said. I speak many languages. English is just one. I'm going to now ask you boys some questions, and I expect answers. We're not going to. Suddenly he reached out and slapped Jack across the face. His chair rocked backwards with the blow. Leave him alone, I screamed. He turned to me. Would you rather I strike you? No, 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 I stammered. Wise, answer my questions and there will be no further need to strike anybody. Now, tell me of your involvement with the camp. We don't know much, I said. We've been, a, we've been around it a couple of times and... Don't tell him anything, Jack yelled at me. The man reached out again and slapped my brother across the face harder this time. I cringed and looked away. My eyes fell on Mr. Crumb. He was cringing too. The man was now holding Jack's face in his hands and squeezing. Jack was trying to look away, to move his head, but it was hopeless. You will tell us what we want to know. It may be slow and painful, or it may be without pain, but you will tell. Do you understand, he yelled. Jack continued to struggle, and I could see the man tightening his grip onto my brother's face. Onto my brother's face was distorted in pain. Just stop, I shouted. I'll talk to you. I'll tell you everything. He released Jack's face and came and stood right beside me. If you not, do not tell me, it may be necessary for me to take other measures. What do you mean? Do you live with your parents? Just our mother, because why? Why do you want to know? It would be a simple matter to send two of my men to retrieve her. If you do not give me the information I require, that will happen. Do you want your mother to be our prisoner as well? I told you I'd tell you everything, I protested. This is how, uh, how do you say, my insurance policy. At the first lie, I will dispatch my men to get your mother. I'll tell you everything, Jack yelled. I'll tell you everything. He turned to Jack. You will tell us nothing. What did he mean? You will remain quiet, not uttering a word while your brother talks. From him, I expect the truth. From you, I expect only half-truths. It is better for everybody that I get nothing but the truth. I'll do that. I'll tell you everything. Just please leave my brother alone. Please, I begged. Fine, let us begin. Tell me about the camp. I wish to know about the guards, the paths, and the manner in which you entered the grounds. Do you understand? I'll tell you everything. Excellent. Let us begin. Then there's a break in the page. This is the last question. You were wise not to resist or to lie, he said. I felt my whole body relax as he walked away at last. It was over. He was going to leave me alone. He wasn't going to hurt our mother. But what now? I looked over at my brother. I wanted some reassurance that everything was going to be okay. Instead, I found myself gawking at him. His face was swollen and bloody, and he stared vacantly at the floor. He looked as if he was in shock. The man walked across the room, and I watched as he stopped in front of one of the others. Mr. Crumb stood off to the side. The remaining four were nowhere to be seen. May I get them some water? Mr. Crumb asked. The man turned around. Jaw, jaw. That's fine. Mr. Crumb took two glasses down from a cupboard. He went to a pump on the counter and began working it. At first, nothing came from it but a high-pitched squeak as he moved the handle up and down. Then a trickle of brown liquid emerged, followed by a lot more. And finally, clear water started to run into the sink. He filled the two glasses and brought one to Jack, holding it up to his lips. Jack turned away. <clears throat> I don't want it, Jack spat. I don't want anything from you. Do not be silly. This may be the last drink you have until tomorrow when somebody comes to find you. You will need water. Take it, Jack, I quietly pleaded. It wasn't just that I wanted him to drink, but that I knew I couldn't if he didn't. It was bad enough that I was the one who'd done most of the talking. He turned his head back toward Mr. Crumb. As he opened his mouth, he cringed in pain. He allowed Mr. Crumb to pour the liquid into his mouth and gulped it down, a trickle slipping around the glass and down his chin. Mr. Crumb brought me the second glass. I drank the water greedily and it slid down my throat. It had a funny taste, but it was still the best water I'd ever had in my life. Thanks, I mumbled. 
It's the least I could do, he said quietly. You are wise to give them the information. These are not men to fool with. I nodded. I had told them most of what we knew, but not everything. I told them about Corbett's Creek, but not about the waterfall. I told them about the guards and the jeeps, but not about those men I'd seen walking around the grounds. And when they asked questions about the buildings, <coughs> I hadn't really been sure about where some of the things were. What happens now, I asked. Nothing, Mr. Crum replied. We will leave soon and get into positions for the attacks. And us? You remain. A call will be made tomorrow. I will make it myself and let them know of your location. Your mother must already be concerned. What time is it, I asked. He looked at his watch. Almost eight o'clock. She'll be really worried. I wish there was some way I could let her know that you will be safe, but there is not. And you? And me what, Mr. Crum asked. What happens to you? I will be leaving with the agents. All of us will be leaving. By submarine, I asked. He looked taken aback by my question. That would be the way to leave. Herr Crum, called out the leader. He turned around. Lassen zu allen, he barked. I have to leave, Mr. Crum told us. He walked over to the two men, and then all three of them exited the room, leaving Jack and me alone. Are you all right? Jack whispered. I'm okay, you. My jaw is sore, but I'm okay. It looked more than just sore. The whole side of his face was swollen. I'd never seen anything like that before. You didn't have any choice, Jack whispered. What, I asked. You didn't have any choice but to talk to them. I guess not. And you told them just enough, he whispered, his voice just barely audible. Let them go in Corbett's Creek and they'll be caught for sure. From the other room came loud voices, so loud that if I'd understood more German, I'd have known what they were t arguing about. Sounds like somebody isn't so happy, I said. If I weren't in these ropes, I'd try to make them all unhappy. The voices in the other room faded away, and Mr. Crum reappeared in the doorway. He did, he did look very unhappy. No, not unhappy. Scared. He walked into the kitchen, and from behind him, I heard the sound of the front door opening up, and then a few seconds later closing. We, we... We are leaving now, he said, his voice breaking over the last few words. Can you please call our mother tonight just to tell her we're okay, I pleaded. Not tonight, he said, shaking his head. Not tomorrow. But you promised. He shook his head again. He looked pale, and I was positive he was shaking. Why won't you call her, Jack demanded. I cannot. I'm not allowed. But if you don't call, nobody will know to come and find us. I'm sorry, most sorry. I was told that I should not have brought you here. And since it was my mistake, I must correct it myself. What do you mean, correct it? I gasped, my voice barely above a whisper. I am most sorry, boys, most sorry. He reached into his jacket and removed his pistol. He aimed it at Jack's head. <laughs>